What is up, you guys? My name is Moose Version 1, and welcome back to Changeling Tale! It's finally fucking here! Jesse's in chapter. The last part of Jesse's chapter is finally here. I clicked all the way through, back to where we left off, because for some reason my autosave just takes me back to the fucking menu. So, here we go. This is where we left off, something out of Jesse telling me to run, and we're going to see what happens next. Ha ha! <sighs> Instincts kick in. Don't think. Move. The hillside is steep, the terrain uneven. Jesse is a brown of brown and red blur as we dash between the rocks and scrub, making our way to higher ground. Our wolfish legs carry us faster than any man could run if it hit it hits me that we've trained for this moment like one of our races. Turn deadly serious. Hopefully the camera works out. Because I'd rather use the camera than the webcam. Over the crunch of my footsteps, I hear shouts coming from behind us. I, ri I risk snatching a look behind, but see only boulders and debris. A loud sapping, snapping sound. My heart drops, my body topples. Malcolm! Oh, fuck. <laughs> Jessie cuts her flight short, rushing over to me. My ankle is sore, held fast and burns like it's been stung by needles. I look down, fearing the worst, but fortunately my leg is no worse for wear. I'm alright! This is just a snare! Just a snare. I curse myself for being a fool, getting caught in a trap. The fact that it's not a set, set of diabolical metal jaws is some small consolation. I attack the rope, trying to shred the fibers with my claws, loosen the, the noose or the knot, anything, but, e but each touch stings worse than the last. Let me help. Wait, be careful! Jesse scratches the thick cordage and then jerks back. Ouch! What on earth? Is it magic? A toxin? Whatever it is, it's preventing our our escape. The sound of our pursuers is getting closer. We're running out of time. Jesse, you have to go! No! I pause my work to put, put a paw on her shoulder. I've been through worse. I'll be alright. Now get out of here! I'll try and delay them. The truth is, I'm not sure what will happen to me. I try not to think of the worst. The only thing that matters is that Jessie escapes to safety. She holds my gaze for a second, seeing right through me. No, Malcolm, you're not a soldier anymore. You don't have to fight my battles. And I will never leave you behind. Ah, oh, adorable! Right off the rip! Our kiss is short but passionate. Oh, shit. Oh, our change. Our lips part and Jesse stands upright. Beyond upright, taller and taller than tall, her body seems to grow with each breath. The fire burns within. The fires, <laughs> the fires in her eyes, her th fur thickens, stands on end, wild, untamed. A glint catches her claws, talons now, as she steps forward and readies herself to defend me. Never fuck with him. Whoa! My breath catches in my throat. Jesse's never looked so dangerous. Do not trifle with a werewolf or her pack. She's technically a wolver, though, right? Hi, boys. The figures emerging from the fog step on the, their tracks. Those at the front look ready to turn tail, but someone behind them gives a battle cry, and the group, so bolster, charges forth! <laughs> oh, hell yes! Shouting, growling, farm tools thrust with lethal intent. I dare steal only a few glimpses of the battle while I focus on trying to free myself from the snare. Jesse moves quickly, deftly, evading attacks with, with a dancer's ease. A farmer lunges an enormous paw, swipes the pitchfork, snaps in half, turning to useless splinters. Its bearer is at Jesse's mercy, but she doesn't strike. The men fight fiercely, but Jesse isn't after blood. Indeed, she rears up and lets out a great blood-curdling snarl. Woo! Baby! That's right, run, you bitches! 
Sends a shiver down my spine. I see blood drain from the attacker's faces. What weapons remain are dropped, and the men turn and flee back into the morning fog. Hell yeah, yo. All except one. Then I see the gun. I tug desperately at the blasted rope, calling all my strength. It burns my paws like fire. Jesse, go! Leave me! She doesn't heed my words. I see her, her towering form tremble as she steps between me and the rifleman. Jesse's threatening posture melts away, and with it, her imposing shape, tears form at the corners of her yellow eyes. Father. Go fuck it, figure. I, I Malcolm. Father, please put the gun down. A wave of sickness flows from my gut straight to my throat. I swallow it down. Don't shoot, Owen. We're real, real people. The old man's wild, wild eyes rake us up and down, struggling to recon, recon, uh, recon, reconcile our bestial bodies, produce, producing human souls. Sounds. Monsters! Horrid creatures! What witchcraft is this? What vile mischief has taken hold of your birth? I don't know if I'm going to keep that one up, because that was a lot of spitting. Father, no. We're human. We're not monsters. It's me, Jesse, your daughter. He quakes in absolute disbelief, still looking down the barrel of his gun. After all he's witnessed, I think I understand his fear. No! No! What? What the hell have I come to be? Have I come back to here? We're of the same mind, sir. So much more has changed since we've left, of, left for war. More than either of us bargained for. The war's over. You're home now. Lay down your arms. Owen squints incomprehensibly at my flapping muzzle, then turns back to his daughter. Home! This is not home! Oh, God, why won't this nightmare end? Who are you? What have you done with my Jesse? <laughs> oh, God, I'm not going to do that voice for long. Oh. I'm Malcolm, sir. Malcolm Campbell. Jesse was born this way. A fair nature. I stop to see Owen's expression to find out if my words register concern or calm. It's neither. I fear I've shocked him further. What did you say? F Fay, father, the cursed magic you always warned us about. Here it is in front of you. I am one of them. The change in his visage is, is stark and heartbreaking, and his jaw opens wider, nearly hanging off his face. But nothing's changed. I'm still your daughter. Please, put down your gun so we can talk. Owen shakes his head as if waking from a dream. Harlot! Werewolf and imposter in my own home! How many of you are there? Who else is hiding their true colors? Answer or I'll open fire! No one is hiding. I've always been myself. Unapologetically so. You know that. As for Malcolm, there was an accident. Last night when you... I did this! No, no, sir. I respond quickly, but knowing... No, I'm lying. We're... Were he not there last night, I don't believe we all would be in this state now. Owen is having none of it. How many of you attacked? I've only lost control once. How many of you killed? None. But the old man has already reached his verdict. Where does this madness end? I can't let it happen. This is my home, not a village of sin and ad idolatry. Idolatry? Am I saying that right? The Fey are long banished. They can't return. Stop. I beg you. I'm not your fear. I'm real. I have a heart, a soul. Father, look at me. Tears stream down Jessie's face, wetting her muzzle. Her fur. Fury boils inside me as I try to escape the snare, foolhardily trying to convince a madman not to kill us. You are monsters! You prey on the unsuspected, but your honored tongues won't fool me! Honeyed tongues? 
Won't fool me. It's up to me to stop you. Owen, oh, listen to yourself. You're overcome with rage. Enough killing, enough slaughter. This village needs to see more d doesn't need- This village needs not see more death. I fucked that sentence up so hardcore. <laughs> my words, words fall on deaf ears. I feel a touch on my shoulder as Owen raves on. Malcolm. Maybe you can show him you're not a monster. <sighs> Takes me a moment to understand what Jessie is saying, what she's asking me to give up. The pain in her eyes shows how much it weighs on her, too. But we need to do something to wake Owen from this nightmare. Something inside him is keeping him from pulling the trigger. How long will it last? No! No! Discreetly, I finger the vial in my pocket. Is this the only way? Thank you. Thank you very much for giving me a choice here. Do something reckless. The glass feels smooth and cold in my palm. I picture squeezing tightly down on it, the pain of stabbing shards letting the potion seep into my system. Imagine my wolfish form fading away and never experiencing what it is to be like this again, to be like Jesse. No, I can't do it. Even if it's our best chance to, ma to w make Owen back down. I can't let him take what's now the heart of me. It's like Jesse has been saying all along. It's who we are. At our deepest core, if I can't live like this, if neither of us can, then what is life? In equal parts feral and tame. I am more than what this armed man thinks. If this is to be our battle, our face-to-face -face combat, I'm ready to die trying, trying, trying before giving in to his demands. Oh. Yes. Yes! Exactly! <laughs> Fuck. Don't let others label you. Don't let others define you. If you are whatever you are, be whatever you are. If someone is holding you at gunpoint and forcing you to try and do something you don't want to do, sometimes it's, don't take any of this out of context. <laughs> ready to, yeah. I'm wild. A fire blazes inside. I'm ready to fight. Sna snare be damned. I've been here before, and I've won. And no matter what the consequences, I truly believe I will win again. Like every battle before this one, I press on knowing I would rather take a bullet than live a life in fear under someone else's control. Fuck yeah, dude. I would rather risk being shot, whatever the results, than lose my gift of freedom forever. I fought for my country, my family, my fellow man. Now I fight for myself. While Owen rattles non nonsense about knowing Jesse was never his child, I suddenly close my paw around the small stone on the ground and whisper, Jesse, get ready. She sees what's in my hand, goes pallid be beneath the, all that fur. She hisses back, Don't you dare. But I've already made my choice. This ends now. In one quick motion, I lean, for lean out from behind Jesse and throw rock at, at Owen's gun. Owen's eyes go wide, his speech breaks off, he pulls the trigger. The rock connects to the muzzle flash, the sound of a bullet whips past my ears. Run! Jessie runs, not away, but towards the danger. Her father's hand works the bolt with efficiency like a trained soldier. He's fast, but Jessie is faster. Yeah! Fuck your gun, puppy! Fuck yeah, dude! <laughs> As the echo of a snapped wood fades away, all that is left is the sound of Jesse's great huffs. Owen stands frozen and naked before her, quaking with fear and rage. It's come to this, then! He seems so small now. Jesse looks down on Owen silently, unable to un and unwilling or unwilling to speak. What is there to say? Her own flesh and blood. Trust has been broken. A bond beyond repair. More tears well in Jessie's eyes. What she cannot put into words, she lets out a long, mournful howl. My cheeks are wet as well. I dab them. But to my surprise, my paw comes away red. 
Huh? My head still rings with the echo of the flying bullet. I lift my hand to find Owen's shot, had whipped away my hat and clipped off the tip of my ear. Ow! Fuck. Malcolm! Malcolm! Jessie rushes over to me and cradles my head in her paws, blinking away her grief. The wound has begun to sting, but I know it looks worse than it is. I'll be alright, Jesse. Your father. Our assailant stands beaten, paralyzed, and imp impotent, but still unwilling to back down. Stubborn as any other McLeod, unable to understand this display of care between two inhuman creatures. Beasts, cowards, despicable things! If you won't do me in, I will find you and see through you. You'll see through what you've started. Jesse stands slowly, her eyes aflame. Does Owen have a death wish? Part of me believes he actually does. You see that creature, that man you call a monster? She points towards me, directly her acu accu accusations at Owen. He saved my life. He is selfless, a hero, more caring than you could ever know. You know who the real monster is for here, father? Stay, your fucked tongue, changeling! You! You are the monster, you sad, tired old man, trying to kill your... She chokes back her anguish as Owen refuses to back down. Your own child! You are a frail, eaten alive by your own indignity. None shall ever pity you again, least of all your own kin. Exactly. Jessie's tongue is every bit as sharp as her fangs, but as she strides toward her father, I see a change in her. Damn. Her face begins to relax and soften. Her voice steadies as she continues speaking to her fallen father. What makes a monster? Is it a thick is it the thick fur? Oh. The fur on her face and body recedes to reveal porcelain skin. The devious claws, the threatening fangs. As she speaks, her claws and fangs begin to slowly recede. Through the form she cuts is no less intimidating. Or maybe it's what lurks on the inside, just waiting to be let out. She stares down the face of evil. Owen gazes back in awe and horror as he witnesses the divine, a divine sight. A visage as blah, 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 is re-emerging one he knows, one he cared for once. Jesse? His voice cracks with disbelief. He reaches out as if to see if the image before him is an apparition. Jesse's very real hand slaps him away. Damn. That's... Don't you dare say so much as lay a hand on me or Malcolm again. It's all nonsense, isn't it? The tone of Owen's voice has changed from tyrannical to near sublime, as if questioning the mere aspect of his own existence. All of this, none of this is right, it's unholy. He fumbles in his pocket, pulling out a small, well-worn scrap, a photograph which he looks at as he speaks. The creature you've become, it's my doing, my fault, my loss, my failures, what of them now? Move on. Grow a heart for my sister's sake. If there's anything left to be of that shiver of that shriveling shriveled thing. Leave. Go home or crawl back to whatever hole you came from. I know where that hole leads. Owen and I have been to hell and back. Only just this, only he seems to have never truly found a way out. I almost feel pity for his suffering. Although I know I can never forgive him. He lives in a, be in a bed of his own making now, as do we all. Owen's eyes linger on the photo. It finally slips through his fingers, discarded. He turns his head to the heavens and speaks to the sky. For all I've done and I cannot undo, Lord, please, I beg your forgiveness. I have entered the world with, for, with nothing, and I've gained. I've lost. I've, all I've gained, I've lost. 
In your name, I have given my devotion and life. In return, I am given madness and despair. I have nothing. You have two other daughters, you fucking piece of shit. <laughs> God, Malcolm, you look so worn down, bud. Once he has crested the, the edge of the hill, Jesse and I collapse into each other's arms. We fall to the ground, sobbing and gripping tight to one another. Through your tears, Jesse gasps for air. I thought I was going to die. I can't breathe. It's a feeling I know all too well. I cling to her reassuringly. Take a deep breath. It's gone. We're safe. I rock Jessie in my arms but I feel every her heartbeat racing. I don't believe she's calming down, but I can't say I am either. My dear God, what just happened? Your your ear, Malcolm, you're bleeding. Alright, we're alive. That's all that matters now, right now. The bleeding has lessened, though the ringing in my ear continues. Good old tinnitus. The pain is tolerable, the shock is not. I never should have left you in this snare. I'm so sorry. He's still tied up, that's right. Work that snare, baby! Once again, Jesse urgently attacks the rope around my ankles, apparently undeterred by the irritant that covers it. Her dexterous fingers make short work of the knot. I rub my sore paws and start to offer Jesse my thanks, only to find her looking worriedly off into the distance. What is it? Oh, come on. I can't live like this. My heart sinks. I want to believe she's wrong, but that there is an immediate solution, but I'm flooded with dejection and heartbreak. So sorry. Could have gotten us both killed. I could have gotten us both killed. I'm so, I'm so deeply sorry. Jesse turns back to me, surprised. Oh, Malcolm, no. You saved us both. You took a chance. You had to. We needed to save him off. Tears well in her eyes. If I can't live in peace, I don't want to live. That's the end of it. Look at you, Jesse, your face, your body. Jesse gives me a look that indicates she's not ready to speak of her transformation. Instead, she offers her hand and helps me back to my feet. Malcolm, listen, we can't stay here for long. There may be others after us, and you can't be like this. She places her hand on my hip, hips and holds my gaze. We have to hide now. Let's go. Before leaving the battlefield, I collect my trusty hat and peer through the fresh bullet hole. And it, had it been punched any further down, that's a scenario I'd rather not imagine. Instead, through the hole, a scrap of paper on the ground catches my eye. I'm gonna collect the. F I can't save this thing. Okay, I'm gonna collect the photo. Before I follow Jesse, I pluck Owen's discarded photograph from the ground. I knew it. Family portrait taken around the turn of the century. Judging from the age, the man is unmistakably Owen, but he looks different. Is he smiling? I've rarely seen him cheerful. The girls must be Marion and Jesse, then, as well as her, as their mother. Shortly before Grace was born, and well, this was the time when the McLeod family was still whole. A happy time when Owen rem that Owen rem time only Owen remembers, and has chosen to forget. Why? Resentment? Denial? I'll likely never know the answer. Malcolm, hurry! I'm going. Of course, I was gonna collect the fucking photo. I kind of figured it was that. Jesse leads me back to a relatively safety of last night's shelter. We ease ourselves under a ledge out of sight and finally take a time to collect ourselves. This isn't so bad. Cozier than some of the dugouts I'd lived, lived in for sure. Don't say that. You can't lay low here until the until the worst of this pass is over, and then... Then what? Go home? Act like nothing happened? No, I don't know. But I know this. I can't live without you. Oh, I know. Wrong fucking voice. I know this. I can't live without you, Malcolm. There's a future for us. One without guns and claws and fangs. One where we're together and safe. I nod in solemn agreement. Jesse, I want to be part of that future. 
Whatever it, wherever it takes us. I smile weakly, but no less con conviction. Realization spreads across Jessie's face as the, she gra gasps my meaning. This isn't where we belong, neither one of us. Not just because of him, but because we need to be free and live our own lives now. This isn't my home anymore, either. Last night and this morning have proven that. My life has been threatened too many times over and I'm sick of it. Sick of, a p sick of the pit in my stomach. We'll start anew. A clean slate. Leave this, all this drama behind and set the city ablaze with our own brand of excitement. It's not the only thing ablaze. Jesse's mind seems to be all, all right with, po with a light with possibilities. Oh, now, let's get in, we'll get ahead of ourselves. I've had enough excitement for one lifetime. And as is, as is, I'm still awfully conspicuous. Conspicuous. The reminder seems to bring Jesse back down to earth. Oh, sorry, I'm sorry. Uh, you don't have to be like this. You have the power to transform back. I've already, it's already within you. But it's different, difficult to explain, but I can help. I always want your help. Honestly, I don't know where to start. I haven't taken the antidote. You shouldn't need it. Just stay very still. Let my energy guide yours. It's gonna backfire again. Turn her back into a fur, into a fur. I am so tall. <laughs> tall boy for the win. We assume the same position as before. As she presses her cold fingers into my hands, I feel a jolt through my forearms, then a light burning up to my elbows. The breeze grows uh, around us grows stronger. Close your eyes. It makes it easier to relax. With my eyes closed, she guides me with her voice. My heart knows the way, too. Self-control. It is all within me. Deep breaths. Patience. Willingness to change. Hey, it's working! I drift into my own thoughts, sensing my fur float away, float away. off into the ether. My muzzles shift and recede, my ears melting down to human size. My mind controls my body's actions. These contortions, they come easy, easily and fast. The energy flows us, fl around us flows in har harmoniously as Jessie's voice, her speech, or me meanders off into a mantra. You are in control. No one else controls you. He does not control you. Only you have the power over yourself. Take hold of your own power. I'm almost back to human and I blink open my eyes and realize she's no longer talking to me but to herself. Tears stream down her face. He is not in control. You decide your own fate. You choose. No one else chooses for you. You are safe and powerful. Breathe. Breathe deeper. Breathe again and again. <laughs> Jesse. Her eyes open and the tear and her tears stop. Welcome, you're back. She smiles, but the sadness is present, the hurt and deceit. All repercussions of her own father. You alright? Sadly, I know the answer. It will be. And so will you. We'll have peace soon. Very soon. We're not gonna kill ourselves, are we? I look down at my body, blood stained and damaged from the from the snare, and I am human again. Whole well and mostly intact. I've never I've been here before, battered and bruised at the end of a battle. I never want to experience it ever again. I don't want to just live in peace, Jesse. I want to live in joy. Jesse's eyes brighten and she finally breaks into a real smile. Malcolm, let's go find our joy. Take your joy! Take your joy! <laughs> As we emerge from the den of our dirty, torn, bloodied clothing, uh, clothes, we must look for a pair of g pair of ghouls rising from the grave. Look like a pair of ghouls rising from the grave. Fortunately, we're still breathing, and once again, both of, both in a human form. It gives us enough confidence to leave our hideaway through. Neither of us are so ignorant to believe that we are fully safe. But as we walk, the morning air is soft, and a soft whistle of the wind all around us lulls us into peace and serenity. 
as if the world is telling us that it's still here for us. It's still spinning with us attached. That humbles me, instructs me to absorb every moment alive as I've done now every day since returning home. Yet, off I go again, leaving behind the cluster of waking dreams and nightmares. <laughs> Stop for a moment for Jessie to readjust the tattered dangling by a thread from her shoulders. I guess we both ought to find some fresh clothes before we hit the road, eh? I'm not getting, a ch I'm not getting on a train in these rags, if that's what you mean. I may as well be wearing nothing at all. About you, about well. Her laughter fills the valley, seemingly oblivious of the un immodesty. Jessie has, wal has walked proudly by my side the whole whole way down the glen the worst is over we know it in our hearts I won't mention it again but I feel like the weight's been lifted from my shoulders not wearing my well, fur coat it makes me well safer less likely to start trouble I'll never stop apologizing for putting us both in danger the snare the rock it's all my fault I only hope I've not damaged your chance at new dreams You, Malcolm, should I should apologize. I brought us both into this situation. I hurt you, I left you behind. You've not robbed me of my dream, Malcolm. In fact, you've given us the chance to share our dreams together. As a couple. A couple of werewolves, can you imagine? Everything has happened so fast. I'm still having a hard time imagining our future, <laughs> werewolves or not. But, uh, but her enthusiasm is infectious. She looks at... At me with her with starry eyes. I can't give up on my dream just b because you won't give up on me. Yes, well, it takes a strong man to hold up a strong woman. When she laughs and winks at me, I'm struck by all that I love about her. Her independence, her fire and passion, her quick wit and loving heart. What did I do to earn to earn Jesse in my life? My walking, talking, singing, sexy and vivid vivacious danger machine I'm grow I'm growing more and more excited for all of this all this to be behind us we can make a life together grow old together we have family damn it together <laughs> Say, since we're talking about our dreams and our future at last I am able to explain what Walter told me about the pub early this morning and Jesse listens intently he really said all that? Liked my performance that much? Aye, an unusual man for sure. But has a keen eye for talent. I'll give him that. Jesse looks er incredulous, but I can tell her appetite is whetted by Walter's offer. I can't believe it. For all this, do, do you really think that's an option? Leaving with him? He said to meet him at the St Strathcaddon station this afternoon, if we so choose. Can we trust him? Truthfully, I'm not sure. <laughs> At this point, what's that to lose? If Walter's offer is a shady deal, we drop him like a hot potato. Oh, really? Look at you. Damn it. Ugh. Oh, owie. Oh, really? Look at you with your slang. I picked it up from my lady friend. I approve. Truly, we have options. We have legs. We'll walk home if we need be. I also have money. Enough show stowed away for a rainy day or two. This is just the next step. <clears throat> Nothing is permanent. That's for sure. <sighs> Our mutual eagerness to escape is now palpable. Palpable. But I dread saying goodbye to Graham. The thought of leaving family must be on Jesse's mind, too. Should we go to your house first? Speak with Agnes? Oh, God, probably. But do you think we'll find your father there, too? I well, imagine he's drinking himself silly at the pub. We'll cross that bridge when we need when we need, when need be. We'll cross it together. Hand in hand, claw in claw, tooth in tooth. My lovely day. <laughs> The wind picks up and carries us toward the farm, but by good fortune, we pass no other people, not a soul in sight. I avert my eyes when I, when I see a steel trap open and ready, 
the battleground we leave won't have closure, but it also won't contain us. Inhaling the morning dew and the sour scent of the salty coast is like breathing to he in heaven. To just be alive is truly the greatest gift. Ain't that the fucking truth now? When I lean into Jesse's neck to steal a kiss, I detect the strong, oaky smell of last night's perfume. Perhaps I'm living through the lens of survival, but the smell is the best I've ever taken in. I feel it travel through my nose, throat, and lungs and hold it in as long as I can. <sighs> hey, look! When we reach Grand's house, the front door is partially ajar. I look to, to Jesse before opening it, the door with bated breath. Hello? Oh, hi, ladies. Welcome. The old mare's eyes, wet and with tears, go wide in sight of my bloodstained jacket. Oh, my boy! My grand hurries over to me and clings like she's never let, let go. Goodness, are you hurt? I'll fetch a doctor. It's fine, fine. It looks worse than it is. Once I entered my home as a child, this, then a so, then a so-called hero. This time, a survivor, ready to announce another departure. Grand feels so sturdy and frail all at once. It will devastate her that I'm leaving. You look like a ghost. What happened? Malcolm, have you seen... As Jessie steps to the door behind me, little Toast leaps out from under the table and into her arms. Sis, Jessie! Ah. Jessie's sister's eyes light up and rush over to scoop her into a great, a great hug. Gee, it's good to see you too. Agnes and I are soon enveloped by their embrace as well. And many happy tears are had before we all collect ourselves and sit down as a family. Marion can't take her eyes off our <laughs> bedraggled clothes. Lord of mercy, Jesse, what happened to your dress? It's torn to ribbons. Are you all right? Before Jesse can answer, Marion lowers her vo voice to a whisper. Are you are you attacked by the monster? <laughs> <laughs> I look at the other women with, with a raised eyebrow. Had no one let Marion in on what is what's what had happened on Jesse's secret? At this point, I'm not sure we should dispel Marion's blissful un unawareness of the situation, but it's Jesse's decision decision to make. It is a long story, but don't worry about the monster, Marion. I think it's gone. Gone? Do you mean gone for now, Grace? Jesse sneaks a sly wink, which prompts a sigh of relief from both Agnes and Grace. But the flick of Jesse's eye isn't subtle <laughs> through the slip of Marion's scrutiny. Is there something you're not telling me? <laughs> Marion, you're adorable. We had a wild night, a tale best saved for another time. The table is silent as Marion squints at each of us for a moment, trying to s suss out unspoken truths. But none of us crack beneath her gaze. Well, while you were having your wild night on the town, you n never would have guessed who showed up at the art doorstep. The ghost. May as well have been. It was Father. He looked so bedraggled. As you two. Said he'd seen monsters. That's why I asked. Marion's face pales. Father kept mumbling nonsense, having fits of hysteria. There was blood he he told us to get out of the house twasn't ours he kept saying sounded like a madman if you ask me no one asked you there's something wrong with him he needs help <laughs> yeah Jesse snorts <laughs> right there's certainly something wrong with him how can you joke that's our father he was pointing a gun at us earlier but you know whatever Marion is wound up upset and I sense another sisterly argument brewing <coughs> but it doesn't come. There's nothing left to quarrel over. Marion, I'm not welcome here anymore. The eldest McLeod sister is taken aback. What do you mean? Grace puts a hand on Marion's knee and Toast gives it a lap. 
Marion, father was at the pub last night. He blew up at Jesse. A lot happened. Well, wait, what? Marion, listen to me. I've been disowned. The words are blunt, heavy, and they echo in, in the stunned silence. Grant takes Jesse's hand and squeezes it tight. My dear, I'm so sorry. I can never remember Grant's voice. I apologize. I keep changing it. But what did you expect? Blunt words met with blunt words. Jesse's face falls. I'm sorry. I know it sounds callous, but you knew he would never approve of your act. You didn't react appropriately, Marion. But think of what he's been through. I'm sure he didn't mean it. Please understand, Father must be traumatized. He's home now, though. He'll change with time. We can... She smiles desperately. We can be a family again. For a moment, no one responds. Marion has worked so hard to hold her family together, clinging to the hope that things could somehow return to how they were. But if she'd seen what we had seen, she would know there's no going back now breaks my heart it's not just father I'm truly sorry Marion but I have to go the eldest sister looks devastated and grand looks to me with growing realization this wasn't at all how I wanted to break the news to her what's going on I feel left out left behind I'm scared no one tell me anything tears stream down Marion's cheeks grand seems on the verge of weeping too my mind is made up but I don't know if my soul can bear both women begging us to stay. Grand finally opens her mouth to speak. Sometimes when the choice is too difficult, God makes the decision for us. I still don't understand. Jessie doesn't want to leave us, but she needs to be elsewhere. It's the path that must she must follow the path she must follow. Woof, had way too much whiskey with that last coffee. The open road ahead of her, one where she's safe. Loved ones off to depart, but f hopefully one day they can return. Jesse looks between me and Gran and nods. Thank you for understanding, Agnes. I'd better find some fresh clothes and pack my things. Will you two help me? What things? You've nothing here. Grace nudges Marion and gets her to understand it's time for a private discussion among siblings. I thought Jesse might uh, want to leave quickly, sis, so I packed up some things for her before we came. Let's see what's left in the other room. She means my bedroom. <laughs> but I won't say it in front of Graham, as if any of that nonsense matters right now. Preci precise as always. Thanks, Grace. My love, my dear, my wolven darling. Sisters tr roll toast off of Marion's lap and exit to leave to leave me with Gran, who has finally succumbed to tears. I have to say goodbye again, don't I? It won't be for too long, I promise. Just long enough for us to dust off a, the dust is settled here, for the rumors and anger to subside. The rosy promise feels far-fetched even to me. Gran looks at me wistfully and with a delicate smile on her face. Rosie Promise feels far-fetched. Uh, uh, delicate smile on her face. Grace thought Jessie's performance was just marvelous. She told us all about how many people came and just how special it was. Your lady friend's a star through and through. I can't wait to see her act in the big city. If the old bones can make the journey. It'll be a sight to behold. I know that. Malcolm. Since you and Jesse have been, well, a couple, I've imagined things, I've wondered what I would would have done if your grandfather went, had wanted to le leave this little village or our little haven. Oh, what if I dreamed of being in moving pictures, living a life of fame and fortune? Or could you imagine your grand's name there on the marquee lights? <laughs> How ridiculous, eh? Carly, you're a star in my book as well. Oh, stop. The point is, I think I would follow love, whether it be my husband's dream or mine. It is much love as theirs. Once life is shared, all is shared. 
My body realizes the tension. I didn't notice. I was holding. I was holding. I'm. Re Lead Grand was war warmed to my idea of joint to. Tension I, I didn't notice I was holding. Okay, that makes sense. I was warmed to the idea of me joining Jesse on her adventures. Just don't forget your own dreams. You have both allowed to have them too. My dreams. Since coming home, I've hardly had time to think ahead of about what I want. But today's events have given me some clarity. I want peace. A fresh start with a loving woman. A woman who I want to see succeed. Thank you, Gran. Someday... I'll have dreams beyond Jessie's. I know I will right, right now. I want to see her thrive. That is my dream. Our dream. Gran's eyes well up again, and now I know, I, and I know her heart is with me, as mine is forever with hers. Will you be all right while I'm gone? I'll visit often. Or if you'd like, I'll send for you. You can join us. Oh dear, I'm not an invalid. I'm old. That's all. I'll manage. I've got the girls here. I have. I have the girls here. Jasmine. Hey, Grace. The youngest middle child girl reemerges from my room and places her hand on Grand's shoulders. I just spin across the damn room. I'm happy to live with Agnes to help her help with whatever she needs. Grace's sudden enthusiasm for helping catches me off guard. I expect Grant to object, but she. It's all smiles. We'll enjoy a cordial or two after a long day, won't we? It dawns on me this arrangement has been previously discussed, undoubtedly during one of my long nights spent I spent with Jesse. I fear you may be uh, burdened with my sister, too. I don't picture Marion returning home should father really kick us out. I don't know why such sound like real William Shatner there. Your father is many things, but not he is not an evil. Uh, Marion is right. Give him time to himself. He'll come around. <clears throat> Not sure I agree, but keep silent on the matter. It does put me at ease knowing that Gran will have family to protect her. I feel more love in this home today than I've felt before. I can't thank you enough, Grace. I'm the one who is thankful. I have so many looking, so many people looking for, uh, looking out for me. Oof! I need to take a nap. Grant faces me again and furrows her brow. And you, young man, what will you do in the city? Your guess is as good as mine. I'll be cheering on my very talented lady friend and try to find work by her side, I suppose. Make an excellent barkeep. You're a good listener and always have a friendly smile on your face. Do I? I never really thought about it. Maybe i go talk to Bulgaria and get some tips. You have the sweetest, you have the sweetest face I've ever seen. Damn it, that goofy outfit again. Jessie joins us again, looking much more comfortable in her street clothes. You obviously haven't looked in a mirror lately. Marion quietly emerges last, looking introspective, but no longer distraught. Some small part of me wonders what she, what she said to reassure her. But mostly I marvel at just how supportive we all are for each other. Two families become one. My family. When will we reunite again? I may be unable to read the sky, but I know it's written in the stars. Jesse squeezes my hand. Ouchies. I think it's time. Let's go find the monkey man. I forget his name. I said it. I forgot it. <laughs> Doesn't take long to change clothes and gather my belongings with which are scarce. <laughs> While doing so, I calculate the cost of a train travel to and from Aknakraj, as I need, I'll need, I'll need to return often. Grace and Marion can help run the farm, but I need to be here to assist from time to time. It's a pipe dream ahead of us, but I'm not ob oblivious to reality. Son of a bitch, I can't talk. I chuckle to myself. The reality is, I can never stay away for long. I would miss them all too much. Toast. <laughs> I take our bags and Jesse holds the door for me. I've been home less than a year and off I go again. Grand gives me one final hug. You're coming back here. It's meant it meant everything to me. Thank you for showing me the magic still exists in the world. And don't you dare let that magic get you into more trouble. 
<laughs> I won't grab. Farewell, me boy! Not farewell, only see you later. I don't dwell on disappointment or despair, as the pain will burn too deeply. I'm with a woman I love, and we are off on an unimaginable adventure. Don't frag Agnes, I'll take good care of him. From the stable comes Grace pulling a reluctant Hazel. Hazel! Oof, I thought you might want to say goodbye to your faithful steed. Ah, oh, yes, I'll miss you most of all, Hazel. Help the girls keep this farm and ship ship. And don't you worry, you will be cap you'll be in capable hands. Wait, is Hazel got a tear in her eye? Hands are far more capable than mine. Her looks tell me she rubs against Grace who laughs. Yes, we'll get along swimmingly, I think. It's a good thing I'm leaving. There's not enough room for two divas in this town. Right? Just don't just don't forget us when you become a big star, sis. Never. How could I forget the little people all the little people? All the small things. Dizzy tussles her little sister's head and remind, reminding her of her stature. Hey. When you get to the city, remember your family will always be here for you when you need us. My eyes get watery again. Gran and Mount Marion look like a mother hens whose chicks are about to leave the nest. Thank you, truly. I could have I could I couldn't have asked for bigger better fans. <laughs> Jesse turns to me. We have a hike ahead of us to get to the train station, shall we? Wait. My voice had changed. Marion sets toast in there and runs into the house. Turning a moment later with a basket, she rushes over to Jesse. Two loaves of honey bread and a jar of burdock root jam for the road. Aw, adorable. Ah, oh, there she goes! <laughs> Jesse hugs her sister and Marion begins sobbing. Please come back soon, please. I will, Marion. You have so much love. Never stop giving it to everyone. Even when they don't deserve it, I want to stay, say, but I bite my tongue and try to stay positive. De good toast. Dog yaps and dances around our feet, oblivious to the bittersweet pain that is eating at all of us. Talking about a friggin' farewell. I mean, that's interesting, though. Our last round of goodbyes, and Jesse and I start down the road. Excitement of trepidation spin around in my belly. With our entire lives packed in, in in tow, we walk cautiously into a new beginning. Remarkably, I almost went philosophical on this, but then I stopped myself. Son of a f Our bags are surprisingly light. Considerably, they are carry everything we need to start anew, not anew nonetheless. When we reach the top of the hill outside of town, I, put, I must pause to catch my breath. Ugh. Ugh. <sighs> This be easier in Feral Farm and Wolf Farm. <sighs> the road we walk forks here. Any other day, we might take the track into town and get goods from the market and libationette, lib lib stag, and nanny. I don't know what the hell that was. But today, we will travel down the path that takes us around town, far away from prying eyes and pitchforks. What is it? It's finally sinking in that I might be looking at this village where I grew up for the last time in a long while. I think I'll miss this little town. The serenity and quiet in the open highlands, too. Bet you won't miss the back-breaking work. That's true. I won't miss the terror we faced, either. What about you? You miss this village? I'll miss my sisters, Balgare, your gran, but the village? No. I never felt welcome here. Guess it was never big enough for me. You can see the blaze in her, the passion that drives her. If she feels any fear or pain for what we leave behind, it is well hidden beneath her shining eyes. Jesse takes my hand in hers. This town gave me you, though. For that, I'm thankful. As am I. This is it, Malcolm. This is our life. This is our time. I nod, my heart pounding. Our time. I'm ready, Jesse. Ready for a new beginning. I 
We take our first steps down the road from away from town, finally free, boundless, held back from by our dreams, well, and finances. For the first time in a long time, I smile not out of lust, raw energy, nor drunken frivolity, but out of relief. A simple relief of a fresh start. There are yet unknowns. I wonder about my new abilities, about potentially being able to change. What control do I really have? Why, well, Jesse with me, always to transition to and from a wolf? Hmm. What could possibly trigger a reaction? All unanswered questions. Futile questions. Because for everything under my power, there are a million more things I have no say over. No control whatsoever. Ain't that the fucking truth. I don't dwell on the concerns. Perhaps I am love drunk, being willfully ignorant, or simply being whisked away by a greater by greater things. What I do know is that I am off for a new life with my new family. A sudden thought stops me in my tracks. You know, Jesse, city folk might ask if we're married. A thought had crossed my mind. What should we tell him? Pop the question! <laughs> I uh, suppose we could um rectify that. Don't you dare propose to me, Malcolm Campbell. Not on the most exhausting day of my life. I simply want to know if we have a story. In that case, I say we're married. No children. Your ring. Oh, well. It's not overthinking. I just want you to know I'm, I'm the marrying kind. That's all. She winks at me. A handful of searing, gorgeous energy. All mine. If she's to be my wife, when she's my wife, I dare say... I'll have quite a handful. I think that's the fucking truth, dude. Whew! Now that's out of the way, we can move on to more important things. Alright! <laughs> In one swift movement, I scoop her up and with a, into a deep kiss. Didn't he get shot in this ear? Shouldn't this ear be kind of jacked up? When our lips part, Jessie lets out a surprised, excited laugh. Her joy is pal palpable. I laugh along, riding the roller coaster of life, ready to let the new adventure begin. Oh, you sweetheart. Come on, Malcolm. Let's go. I kiss her hand once hard once more. Life is starting again. This seems like a good place to pause it or stop it. And I got a new gallery entry. Cool. Well, this seems like a good place to stop because I don't know how long I've been recording. I know it's close to an hour. I don't know. I don't remember how long it took me to start the episode, and I've got like three freaking cuts to do with this stupid camera. But that is gonna do it for this episode of Changing Tale. Thank you guys so much for watching. I'm so glad this is back. Oh my god! You guys have been blowing up my stuff with it as soon as it dropped. Little Napoleon pm'd me on discord and everything telling me that this dropped and that's amazing that you guys all remembered that i wanted to play that, that i'm playing this and stuff like this i love changing tail to bits i didn't get very philosophical on this one i almost did but i probably cut that out because i would that would have ended badly and a lot of probably bad backlash so i better just keep my mouth shut about that <laughs> anyway yeah it wasn't too philosophical it was just me basically talking about how this game hits a lot of hit interesting points and I know a lot of you guys probably like watching me do this because I do get philosophical in it because this game speaks to me in volumes not only the fact that the protagonist it does feel like choices I would make if I was in that situation like literally I could see myself being with any of these three girls oh hell Jesse reminds me a lot of my wife all three of them remind me of my fucking wife which I guess makes puff fucking perfect sense uh I do main Jesse the most mainly because she's a wolf and foxes are, are candid, are can, you know, partially canine, mostly canine. They're the feline canine, but still. So fox, wolf, not too much of a difference. Grace is just awesome because she's a fucking dragon with mythical creature stuff. And Marion's our lovely cow lady. She's beautiful. She's wonderful. And she's amazing. Uh, I'm gonna get back into this next episode soon. This one had no patron stuff for it. I still have a patron video. I need to edit. I have been lazy. Uh, actually, I've been addicted to Days Gone. I've pretty much almost beaten it all the way, and then I might come back into that. I want to get back into Elden Ring, but I don't know for sure. But, uh, what I was going to say, the deal where it did give you the choice. Thank you so much for giving that a choice, not just breaking the vial and turning back human. 
Thank you for giving that a choice very, very much, because if that ever happened to me, I would choose being an anthro over a fucking human any day of the week. I've actually had a conversation about with my wife about this, about how, you know, I'm human. Yeah, I know I'm human, and I'll be human. I am what is known as a man. I am a straight white male. That's how I was born. That's how I am. I am not transphobic, I am not homophobic, I'm not any type of phobic. If you want to be whatever you want to be, be it. Just don't push your idealisms down people's throats. Being a furry, that does put me in the fandom, and being, you know, a lot of people in the fandom are LGBTQ+, and that's completely fine and dandy. Just quit shoving it down a lot of people's throats. Quit trying to confuse the crap out of kids about trans stuff. I, kids aren't going to know what they are until they're 18. A lot of people experiment and don't realize who they are until when they're in their 20s. So why is it so important for a kid to know their sexual identity at 6? <laughs> Sorry, again, I don't understand it. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you got to the end of the video, congratulations. <laughs> Not a lot of people do. But if you did, feel free to hit a thumbs up button or put a comment down and say, Hey, I got to the end of the video. That'd be pretty cool. Uh, if you guys want to see me react to anything uh, for reaction time, feel free to put it in the comments. Oh, son of a bitch. I am back again. Fucking camera's a piece of shit. Anyway, thank you guys so much for watching. If you have any other ideas, stuff you want to see me react to or play, feel free to put it in the comments down below. I'll check them out. Uh, if I can get them right away, cool beans. If I can't, then I'll put them in the wish list or I'll put them in something like that so I can get them later date. So, that being said, thank you guys so much for watching. Keep your eyes open for some more Changing Tale. <coughs> This is, coming, this is amazing. So, thank you guys so much for watching, and as always, I'll see you in the next one. And peace out. Uh, what's up?